from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, June the 23rd, 2022. Israel's foreign minister and incoming prime minister, Yair Lapid, flew to Turkey for a quick trip this morning for what he called a political security visit, together with the director of the foreign ministry, Alon Ushpiz. Lapid tweeting later, the past year has seen great progress in Israeli-Turkish relations. I landed recently in Ankara. I am happy to meet here my friend Mevlut Kavusoglu, the Turkish foreign minister. We will continue to tighten the political security cooperation between the countries. And at a joint press conference following their sit-down, Lapid thanked Turkey for its cooperation with Israel over the last few weeks in particular to thwart Iranian terror threats against Israeli citizens in Turkey. The lives of Israeli citizens have been saved thanks to security and diplomatic cooperation between Israel and Turkey. Just today it was published, the Turkish intelligence recently foiled an Iranian plot in Istanbul. And these efforts are ongoing. We are full of appreciation for the Turkish government for this professional and coordinated activity. The arrests Lapid mentioned reportedly included of five Iranian nationals suspected in a plot to assassinate Israeli citizens in Istanbul. And referring to the Iranian terror threats, Kavisoglu reassured we will never allow such things to take place in our country. Lapid returned to Israel this evening. And the foreign ministry shared that Israel was chosen today to serve as president of the IHRA, the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, for 2025, noting that year will mark 80 years since the liberation of the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp and the end of World War II, as well as the 25th anniversary of the IHRA's establishment which has 35 member countries and works to promote Holocaust education, research and remembrance, and fight against Holocaust denial, anti-Semitism, and all forms of racism. The ministry said the decision to elect Israel was made unanimously at the IHRA's annual plenary session today in Stockholm. The leadership is shared by Israel with Yad Vashem, whose chair Dani Dayan presented Israel's candidacy in Sweden today. Dayan noted the alarming phenomena of Holocaust denial and anti-Semitism in various parts of the world. He said the acceptance of our candidacy strengthens our ability to act in this realm more vigorously. Dayan yesterday visited Israel's embassy in Stockholm, Ambassador Ziv Nevo Kulman, tweeting his thanks to Dayan for visiting and for honoring the memory of the six Swedish diplomat righteous among the nations, among them most notably Raoul Wallenberg, who risked their lives by saving Jews during the Holocaust. Special Envoy to Monitor and Combat Anti-Semitism, Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt, will fly to Saudi Arabia on Sunday, her first international trip since taking on the role this past April. The U.S. State Department said today that the 11-day trip will include stops in Saudi Arabia, Israel, and the United Arab Emirates, where Lipstadt will meet with government officials and civil society leaders saying her engagements will emphasize promoting interfaith understanding as well as combating intolerance and anti-Jewish sentiment. Lipstadt intends to build on the profoundly important Abraham Accords, the State Department said, to advance religious tolerance, improve relations in the region, and counter misunderstanding and distrust. And an Emirates Airlines Boeing 777 arrived at Ben Gurion Airport today, inaugurating its now daily flights between the UAE and Israel. Emirates, the UAE's largest airline, tweeted, Touchdown, we've officially landed in our newest destination, Tel Aviv. The airline's new route follows the signing of the Abraham Accords between Israel and the Emirates almost two years ago. Emirates Airlines said those on board today's flight included Emirati, Israeli and American officials, among them Israel's ambassador to the UAE, Amir Hayek, and Emirati Ambassador to Israel, Mohammed Al-Khaja, 
who tweeted, I hope that the new air route will open up a new path of opportunity for us and strengthen the ties between the two countries. The flight was given a water cannon salute at Ben Gurion Airport and greeted by Israel's Minister of Transport and Road Safety, Merav Michaeli, who said, The step we are marking today is far beyond aviation. It is an important political step that blurs the physical boundaries between us and strengthens our mutual commitment. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, June the 23rd at 7 o'clock, it's Talmud Study. At 7.30, Eric Plesko tells of his journey from Nazi-occupied Vienna to becoming an Oscar-winning film producer. At 8, Jonathan Tobin addresses the mapping project of BDS Boston and then speaks with Lana Melman on the cultural boycott campaign within the entertainment industry. At 8.30, Shahar Azani speaks with Miriam Elman on the important work of countering anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment on college campuses. At 9, Mark Golub speaks with David Renzer about BDS in the music industry. At 10, Erez Sherman speaks with CEO of the Philadelphia 76ers and the New Jersey Devils, Scott O'Neill, to discuss his journey on Rabbi on the Sidelines. And coming up next, it's Good Week, Israel. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, June the 23rd, 2022. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy. Stay well.